Welcome to this new video. In the previous video, we looked at the rebirth of man, and now we are studying how a person can grow in grace after being born again. In this video, we will discuss the keys to living more and more in God's grace each day. As we saw in the previous video, we cannot become more or less righteous in our spirit. During the rebirth, Jesus made us righteous, and this righteousness remains. However, our soul and body are not yet righteous and holy. That is why the Bible calls us to live a holy life. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 3 says, For this is the will of God, your sanctification. So we are meant to live a holy life. God's grace is not an excuse to sin. Or as the Apostle Paul said in Romans 6 verses 1 and 2, What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. A major danger of sin is that it hardens our hearts, and we eventually lose sight of God and turn our backs on Him. That is why sin is a danger. Hebrews 3 verse 13 says, But exhort one another every day, as long as it is called today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. For we have come to share in Christ, if indeed we hold our original confidence firm to the end. God's grace is so great that He forgives us for our sin and delivers us from the power of sin. In other words, when we sin, God forgives us. And at the same time, God gives us the power to break free from sin. Let's look at a few keys to how this works. Key 1. You are no longer alive. This key is about the fact that you are no longer alive. Of course, we are not talking about our body or soul. We are talking about a part of our body and soul, namely our sinful nature. This nature died during the new birth, was crucified with Jesus, and no longer exists. Instead, we have received a new divine nature from Jesus. Let's look at how this works exactly. Romans 6 verse 1 says, What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means! How can we who died to sin still live in it? Paul asked a question. Shall we continue to live in sin? We do not, for we died. Our nature no longer desires sin and does not commit sin. Our sinful desire has died and there is no point in living in sin. Romans 6 verse 3 says, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into His death? Through water baptism, during the new birth we were baptized into Jesus. Just as Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, our old life died on the cross of Calvary. We entered the baptismal pool with a sinful nature and came out with a divine nature. Romans 6 verse 4 says, We were buried therefore with Him by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. But this is not the end of the story. Our old sinful nature has died, but God has given us a new divine nature in place of our old sinful nature, and we live in Christ. We have become completely one with Jesus Christ, both in His death and in His resurrection. We no longer live in a life of sin, but live in a holy new life together with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Romans 6 verse 5 says, For if we have been united with Him in a death like His, we shall certainly be united with Him in a resurrection like His. We keep our sinful nature dead by keeping it on the cross. Jesus, by His grace, paid the price, killed our sinful nature, and gave us a new life. Because of Jesus' grace, we no longer have to be slaves to sin. Romans 6 verse 6 says, We know that our old self was crucified with Him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. Our entire identity has changed. We are no longer sinners, and we no longer have the need to sin. You may think, that sounds nice, but I see sin in my life. How can this be? God has given you a new identity and the need to sin has been taken away. You just lack the revelation about this fact. We can continue to sin because we think we are still slaves to sin. We just don't realize that sin no longer has us in its power, and we are allowed to walk in freedom. Sin is bluffing at us. We think that sin has us in its grip, but in fact we have been completely set free. Romans 6 verse 8 says, Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with Him. Instead of the sinful nature, we have now received a divine nature. We live a life together with Jesus and are allowed to behave as beloved children. Romans 6 verse 9 says, We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over Him. For the death He died, He died to sin once for all, but the life He lives, He lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Our old nature has passed away and died on the cross of Golgotha just like Jesus. And the good news is that Jesus not only died but also rose from the dead. And just as Jesus rose from the dead, we have risen and received a new and holy life from Jesus. We have already briefly touched on this. 
our old nature has been crucified. Galatians 5 verse 24 says, And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. The crucifixion was a terrible punishment for criminals. It was extremely painful and every criminal wanted to jump off the cross as quickly as possible if he could. Compare it to boiling water. If I put my hand in a cup of boiling water, I pull my hand out of the cup as quickly as I can. In this way, the sinful nature tries to come back into our lives. And it can sometimes be painful for us to stop certain sins or to stop with bad friends. Should we then impose all kinds of restrictions on ourselves and forbid ourselves to commit certain sins? No, because then we return to the works of the law. It is important to make a decision of the will and to say that we no longer want to live in sin. After that, it is important to focus on God's goodness, holiness and His Holy Spirit and to focus on the things that come from God. Key 2. Be a slave to what is good. Now that we have seen that we are no longer under the power of sin, it is also important not to continue to serve sin as a slave. We have been set free by Jesus, and there is no need to be a slave to sin anymore. Romans 6 verse 12 says, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. Do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness. This Bible text is in the imperative mood, Do not let sin reign. Why not? Because the sinful nature is dead and hanging on the cross. It should no longer have any influence on our lives. Many believers do not know that the power of their sinful nature is gone. There is no need to live in sin anymore. The sinful nature is gone. You have lived in sin, but thanks to the new birth, this life is over. Romans 6 verse 13 says, Do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. Paul does not say you are not allowed to sin. So think all the time that you are not allowed to sin and do everything you can not to sin. Paul says that we need to change our focus. We need to yield our members to God and do good things with our bodies. When we do good things, we automatically do not have the time, energy, and desire to do bad things. Do not be a slave to sin, but rather be a slave to righteousness and to good works. Romans 6 verse 19 says, for just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness leading to sanctification. God wants to deliver us from the power of sin by His grace. Why? Because sin is a terrible slave master full of misery and death. God wants to bring us to a point of blessing and eternal life. Romans 6 verse 22 says, But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end, eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So let us do good things with our bodies and be a blessing. God's grace even goes so far as to help us to live in this and to give us the desire to live in this. Philippians 2 verse 13 says, For it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for His good pleasure. So an important key to living in God's grace is to not only stop doing bad things, but to start doing good things. Paul gave many examples of this, such as Ephesians 4 verse 28. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands, so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. And 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 7 says, For God has not called us for impurity but in holiness. Do you see the picture that Paul wants to make clear to us? We should not be occupied with sin, but rather with doing good works. We can only be occupied with one thing at a time. Are we busy with stealing or giving? With cursing or blessing? with selfishness or generosity. Paul urges us to be occupied with the good things and automatically the sins will fall away. Key 3. Change your thoughts. In order to apply key 2 well, it is necessary to renew our thoughts. In the past, our thoughts may have been selfish, focused on our own pleasure, and we had wrong thoughts about people. Before our actions and deeds become good, it is first necessary that our thoughts make the decision to be good. Our body and our actions are controlled by our thoughts that are in our soul. It is our choice. Am I going to live by the spiritual principles that God has planted in my mind? Or do I remain obedient to my earthly and sinful desires that have penetrated from the sinful nature? It is important to make a clear decision of your will today and say, 
I'm going to use my life to do good for God and the people around me. Colossians 3 verse 9 says, Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. And Ephesians 4 verse 22 says, To put off your old self which belongs to your former manner of life, and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. During the new birth, God made us new. Every believer has become a new person. Now it is our choice to walk according to the needs and regulations of the old man, or to live according to the needs and regulations of the new man. We do this by changing our thoughts. Colossians 3 verse 1 says, if then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. So what are earthly things that we can think about? These include fornication, impurity, evil passion, and evil desire. The actions that people take flow from the thoughts. First, we think a lie in our head before we speak the lie. By renewing our thoughts, our actions automatically change. Stop these wrong thoughts and change them with positive and good thoughts from God. Philippians 4 verse 8 says, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. We think good thoughts so that bad thoughts fade into the background. And what should we do when an impure or bad thought suddenly comes up? We immediately take that thought captive and subject it to the obedience of Jesus. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5 says, We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ, being ready to punish every disobedience. When your obedience is complete, anyone can have a bad thought. What do I do with this bad thought? I take it away immediately. We must consciously check our thoughts, see if the thought comes from God or from the flesh and make sure that our fleshly and bad thoughts do not gain the upper hand in our lives. According to research, a person has tens of thousands of thoughts per day. Of these tens of thousands of thoughts, many are normal thoughts that do not come from God, but are not wrong either. For example, think of the thoughts, what am I going to spread on my bread? Or what sweater am I going to wear? We don't have to take these thoughts captive. They are thoughts to be able to live and to make small decisions in life. But if a wrong thought comes into our minds, such as, Should I lie to my boss or should I be late for work? Then we take it captive and listen to the will of God. Here are ways to renew your mind. 1. Learn the truth by studying the word of God and receiving revelation. 2. Set your mind on the things that are above with God. 3. Think on everything that is good and honorable. 4. Submit your thoughts to the thoughts of Jesus. 5. Renew your mind by living in a relationship with God and other believers. Key 4. Live in relationship with God and believers. The next key to living in God's grace of righteousness is to have a living relationship with God and with Spirit-filled Christians. Have you ever noticed that your friends, family members, and the people you hang out with can change you? People are susceptible to both positive and negative influences. If we hang out with bad friends every day who are constantly living in sin, making bad jokes and cursing, we slowly change into that image. We get sucked in and every day the sin our friends do seems to get a little less bad. And as a result, we push our boundaries and do more wrong things in our lives. Proverbs 22 verse 24 says, Make no friendship with a man given to anger nor go with a wrathful man, lest you learn his ways and entangle yourself in a snare. But what happens when we have good friends who do good deeds? Speak honorably and continually bless people with words and materials. Then we change into a better version of ourselves. It is important to associate with wise and intelligent people who live righteous lives. Proverbs 13 verse 20 says, Whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. Everyone has their shortcomings and everyone can still grow in grace. But there is one person who is perfect in all his ways and that is God. By developing a personal relationship with God, involving Him in our lives, and continually praying with Him we change we find that the sin we may have been walking in becomes less and less of a temptation. Sin no longer brings joy. We realize that the only valuable thing in life is our relationship with God. And because God is love, righteous, and good, we also change into a person with more love, more righteousness, and more goodness in our daily lives. Enter into a relationship with God 
and you will be transformed into his image. Or as Peter said in 1 Peter 1 verse 13, Therefore, preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, since it is written, You shall be holy, for I am holy. Thanks for watching and see you next time.